In this video, I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step tutorial how to find your very first drop servicing client. And guys, I can promise you one thing. If you follow this entire video from A to Z and do exactly as they tell you every single step, apply it in the real world and do everything as I teach you guys, you're gonna be extremely likely to find your very first client within one to four weeks. So if you want that, watch this video. Don't skip any of these parts because this video has been carefully planned. It's a course, guys. If you skip the beginning or the middle and you just go straight to the end, you're not gonna know what to do. Without any further ado, let's get started and talk about what you will learn in this video. First thing, as I told you guys, you're gonna learn how to get your very first drop sizing client. I'm gonna show you the places where to look for those clients. And then I'm gonna give you five different services that you can offer and make money. Either of those five services you can do, you can try all of these five, you can try one of them, you can focus on two of them, it's up to you. But all of those five processes are very suitable for a beginner looking for his very first drop servicing client. So guys, the second thing, what we're gonna do in this video, I'm gonna show you how to win almost every single drop servicing deal, and I'm gonna give you an exact process how to do that. I'm gonna show you how to speak on the phone, on WhatsApp, on a Google Meets, on Zoom, wherever. I'm gonna tell you how to speak to your clients, to potential clients, to actually land them. I don't want you to talk to 10,000 people and get one client. I want you to talk to 10 people and get nine clients, okay? For example, me, when I'm talking to clients, potential clients, I usually land around 90% of them. Very few people that I talk to on the call, Google Meets, WhatsApp, phone call, I don't land, very few. Most of them I actually land, okay? It's very rare cases that I don't. So I wanna teach you to do exactly the same. If you follow the exact process, right, you're gonna do it. And the final thing, guys, we're gonna talk about the psychology of the clients. How to make them say yes almost every time. So instead of you wasting time, right, talking to some people, calling them up, having these Zoom calls, Google Meets, and stuff like that, having 20 different calls, I want you to have two calls and get one client, okay? So at worst case, after you watch this entire video, you're gonna be able to land at least 50% of the clients that you speak to either on the phone or Google Meet or Zoom, okay? At least 50% closing rate I wanna have for you, okay? And I'm gonna tell you how to do that, guys. So after watching this entire video, again, guys, I'm telling you, entire video, if you just skip and watch some bits of information, right, you're not gonna get the results. But if you do, you shouldn't have problems getting drop servicing clients ever again. Guys, and if you see the comments under my videos, most of these videos are now starting to get comments saying, Tom, by watching your videos, I've actually got... Uh, my first client. Tom, by watching my videos, I made 300, I made 600, whatever. Guys, these kind of comments are now starting to appear under, under my videos, okay? But I'm gonna show you one more comment actually that I got this morning. This might convince you to watch uh, this full video as well, guys. But have a look at this. This was left on my previous full course video. So this guy, I don't know him, five hours ago, he typed in this, brother, you wasted your time. You could sell this course at 300 bucks, okay? My, my previous three hour course about how to find clients, the places where to find clients. And he's, he's valuing this course at least $300, right? So he says I could sell it at $300, but I actually gave it away for you guys. So if you watch this course, right, and you just skip and watch uh, 30 minutes or an hour, Guys, you're wasting your time. If you wanna learn how to get your very first drop sizing client, you have to watch the entire video because I'm gonna give you so much value and so many tips about drop servicing, like no channel anywhere on YouTube, all right? And I'm confident because I know all these channels on YouTube talking about drop servicing and their content falls short of what I'm about to tell you. Okay, guys, first of all, I wanna talk about how you need to be approaching your drop servicing journey, okay? I don't want you guys 
to try drop servicing business. If you're trying something in life, you usually kind of fail, right? I want you to start drop servicing. If you're interested in this business model, you have to start drop servicing and just do it, okay? I don't want you to just try drop servicing, try drop shipping, try affiliate marketing, try this, try that. I want you to do it, okay? And how you do it is you get clients and you get paid, okay? The two things. Now, first thing, guys, how to actually speak to very few clients and land very many clients, okay? So for example, as I said in this video, usually I land around 90% of clients that I actually speak to on the phone, WhatsApp, or Google Meets. How can you do that? Right, so you need to do three things. First of all, guys, is you need to find clients online using email marketing or Upwork. I'm talking about the easiest strategies, okay? So if you're a beginner, forget about all the other strategies. So for example, on my channel, you could see over 20 different strategies how to find uh, drop servicing clients online. And if you are a freelancer, this is gonna be very useful to you as well, okay? So, but I'm gonna focus on just free strategies, how to find clients, because those free are simply the easiest and you will definitely find at least one client if you do this for at least two to four weeks, okay? You're definitely gonna find your first client. So, before I go any further, I need to tell you one thing. Getting drop sizing clients, in other words, is sales, right? Getting freelancing clients, in other words, is sales, okay? So we're talking about you getting a little bit better at sales, right? So in this video, there's gonna be a team across the entire course, right? How to actually land clients, how to actually sell to clients so well that they actually wanna work with you, okay? And they wanna work with you because you're providing good value, you're communicating extremely well, communication is key, guys. Right, so how do you actually sell to very few people? So for example, if you send 10,000 emails and you get zero clients, okay, there's something wrong, guys, okay? You need to sell, sorry, you need to send 1,000 emails and get a few clients, max 1,000 emails. If you're sending 10,000 and getting zero clients, there is something wrong because I've never had that bad results. And if you're following my strategy, you're learning from me, right? You should get similar kind of results. So what do you need to be extremely good at sales? There's three things, guys, okay? You need to be sharp as a tech, enthusiastic as hell, and an expert in your field, okay? And this is a phrase some of you might be familiar with, okay? Do you know this guy? Do you know this guy? Jordan Belfort. Uh, do you know this movie? If you don't know this guy, The Wolf of Wall Street, okay? So this guy, actually, I don't endorse or promote him in any way, but I admire him as a salesperson because I've actually seen him live. I've been in one of his trainings uh, in London around maybe six or seven years ago, long time ago, okay? So he's actually uh, a sales trainer right now. So he's done some bad things in the past. So that's why I really do not endorse anything he's done in the past, okay? I'm just talking about his sales strategies. He's a very good sales strategist. And I've been in his sales training in the past and I, I really enjoyed it, guys, okay? So he has this straight line persuasion system, which basically says three things, you know, sharp as a tech, enthusiastic as hell, and an expert in your field. If you have all these three things, when it comes to drop servicing, when it comes to freelancing, when it comes to any other online uh, service business, you're gonna get clients, okay? So a lot of you guys, are thinking about how do you, I actually get my very first client? So, but I want to, I want your mind to be slightly different. I want your mind to be, okay, how many clients do I need to reach out to? And then how many clients do I need to speak to on the phone to get the first client? 
if you think like that, these are easy bytes that you can easily chew, right? Because how to get my first drop sizing client is a very abstract concept. How do I get it? Um, do I go on Facebook? Do I go on um, Upwork? Do I go on Fiverr? Do I go on, you know, like, what do you, what do you need to do? So in this video, I'm gonna go step by step how to do it, okay? So let's start. Guys, sales, sales, sales. Remember, sales, right? Sales is gonna be important. So here is the exact strategy, how we're gonna be doing it. First of all, we're gonna focus on three things. We're gonna focus on three avenues where to find clients, okay? So the first avenue is gonna be Upwork, okay? Second avenue is gonna be YouTube, believe it or not, okay? Uh, regular viewers of my channel will know this strategy, but it doesn't matter because um, there is 37 million channels on YouTube. And also this video is not about how to get this email address. This video is about how to land clients, okay? Anybody can get this email address, not anybody can land a client. This client, I don't know, and I, I'm seeing this page for the first time, but I'm fairly sure that if I put my mind to it, right, I could land this client potentially for at least something. One of those five services that I'm about to reveal, okay? And finally, I'm going to show you the final uh, strategy to find clients, which is buying a YouTuber list off of Fiverr. I've actually had success with all of these free strategies. So this strategy can be paid and can be free. This strategy can be free because you can get the email for free. And this strategy costs money, okay? So if you have money to invest, you can choose the strategies where you skip some time and you just buy an email list. This you can collect for free, and this you can do either free or paid. I'm gonna show you in this video, guys, okay? But always remember that we're talking about sales. In this video, I'm not telling you where to find clients and where to get a email, that's it. I'm telling you how to land your first client and get your first payment, okay? It's two different things. How many freelancers know where to get clients yet have zero clients? Most of it. How many freelancers know where to get clients and have so much work that they have no spare time? There are some people like that. And I want you to be like that. Whether you're freelancing or job servicing, I want you to have so much work that you cannot even, you, you know, you don't even have the time right? So you're thinking about expanding your team, getting more people in to your drop servicing or freelancing operation, right? I want you to be in that kind of position. And if you follow this strategy, you're going to get, you're going to get it. So first of all, guys, I'm going to now show you uh, the first three strategies, and then I'm going to tell you the five services that we're going to be selling, okay? You can choose either one of these five, or you can try all of them five, okay? So the first thing is this. we going, as a complete beginner, if you're just finding, looking for a very first client, okay, I want you to think about YouTube as an avenue um, for finding clients, okay? So don't even look about, uh, look around at any other avenues. I just want you to focus on YouTube. Because there is 37 million channels on YouTube and there is a lot of different services that these YouTubers do and, and these YouTubers need. So first of all, guys, is how do we actually go from where you are right now into getting a YouTube channel as a client, okay? So the easiest step is to get their email address from here. So when you go to any YouTube channel, you go to about, uh, click view email address, click I'm not a robot, submit, and you get the email address, right? Very simple, very easy. It doesn't cost any money. So you can do this six times per day from one uh, YouTube account, right? And if you create more YouTube accounts, you can do it six times again. So within a week or so, you can get a few hundred emails uh, doing this strategy, okay? And then, guys, the second step, step is, of course, uh, if you want to buy a YouTuber email list, you can just buy it from here. 
I will collect 2,000 YouTuber email lists, guys. So this video, again, as I said, it's not about how you just get these emails. This video is about how to actually land the first client, okay? So I, I'm not gonna spend too much time about talking how to do it. I've, I've got a lot of information on my channel already, how to, how to do this exactly. Just tell them what niche you want the channel to be in, and then tell them you want the channel name, you want the channel URL, you want the channel email, and you want the creator's uh, name if they can. If they can't, then of course they can't. And with that information, right, we now have somebody to market to, okay? So either you do it manually or you buy it, you, you have an email list, okay? Then where this Upwork thing comes in play. So on Upwork, if you create a freelancer account, so I'm not gonna tell you how to create an Upwork account. If you're watching this video, you're extremely smart and you can create an Upwork account yourself. So when you create a new Upwork account, if you don't have it yet, create it as a freelancer, okay? There's two options, freelancer and client. So create a freelancer account. You go on Upwork and you go to this page, upwork.com nx jobs slash search, right? And then you type in YouTube, okay? Uncheck this. Sometimes it says US only, sometimes it says UK only. Uncheck it. Then it's going to show you the global jobs. And for YouTube, we have 11,792 jobs globally right now. Right now, guys. This is crazy. A lot. 15 minutes ago, 19 minutes ago. You see, there is jobs being posted every single day, guys. Okay? And multiple times per day as well. So how do you find uh, clients here completely free? I'm telling you right now. Um, so getting it completely free is a strategy where you have to look into the job description of any of these jobs. These are clients uh, posting jobs, right? And you need to find um, the URL of the channel or an Instagram or a website or some identifiable way to find that client's contact email, okay? or WhatsApp, that's even better. And it's not that easy, you know. Sometimes you have to scroll past a couple of pages until you, you get one of these emails in there, okay? But, guys, this is a completely free way. That's why it's a good one. If you don't want to spend any money or you cannot afford to spend any money, this is a very good strategy. But the second strategy, for example, a lot of people are saying, a uh, similar channel to this. So that's what you want. You want a listing which shows the YouTube URL. And I've showed you that in some of my previous uh, videos about how to find video editing clients. I've showed you uh, that these listings do exist. It's just you have to go through enough of them um, to actually find it, right? Okay. And here's the thing, guys. The second way to find uh, a job or a uh, something to do with YouTube is to actually use the paid Upwork um, strategy. And the paid Upwork strategy is where you actually apply to a job, okay? So for example here, video editing for YouTube, right? Video editor for YouTube. And oh, actually, look at this, financer, right? So this guy is actually saying the name of his uh, channel. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go onto YouTube, I'm gonna type in, uh, I'm gonna go to YouTube, I'm gonna type in this, and hopefully I'm gonna find that channel. It's hard to know if it's this or this, or even that, it's quite hard. It's quite hard. Okay, this is not the best example, I guess. Let's see. Mm, yeah, the financer team. Can you see, it doesn't actually, it's not a very identifiable name. That's why I could not really identify whether it's, you know, which one of these channels it is. But sometimes the name is very identifiable. So for example, if it was financer.com, I would know that this is this one. It's very simple. Then you just type in and it would bring up the financer is not a very identifiable name. There's these few channels, right? If, if it is, for example, this, then you go to about and there's usually an email. So this guy doesn't have it either. But guys, 
the second strategy, as I said, is to actually use uh, the built-in Upwork system. So you click apply now. For example, this guy needs a YouTube uh, video editor for shorts, okay? Now, apply now. So here's the thing, guys. If you wanna get clients via Upwork, so if either of these uh, strategies that I just showed you, buying an email list like that, or getting free emails, or if you wanna try this strategy, so these are the three strategies that I recommend you as a complete beginner going uh, to find for the, your first drop sizing clients or freelancing client for that matter, you need this virtual currency called Connect on Upwork to get clients. Because to apply to your to a proposal, you need to spend connects. Okay. So for example, in this case, what you need to do, type in your rate, okay, and then uh, uh, then in the cover letter section, you can actually uh, type in what you're going to achieve for this client. Of course, he is looking uh, for uh, you know YouTube Shorts video editing, so you can just type in you know. I am going to create you YouTube Shorts. Here's my portfolio, you know, something like this. But guys, a better strategy is, I've showed you this in one of my previous videos, but this is something, if you really want to take drop sizing seriously, use this. So loom.com is a website where you can create a loom. It's basically a video where you talk, record yourself. You can turn off the camera if you don't want to, uh, you know, if you don't want the viewers to actually see you. You just want to show your screen and you want to uh, show your, uh, you know, just your voice voice and screen, you can do it. But ideally, you're recording yourself and, and showing them uh, the results that you're going to provide. So, of course, guys, in this case, it's YouTube Shorts. So if you're creating a Loom, you know, this website, the best case scenario is you would actually show the your portfolio during the Loom. So they open that link, you paste it in here, right? And then when, when they open that Loom video, they're going to see your portfolio in the video itself, okay? Then you don't have to speak much here. What you can say is, you know, I would like to apply for this position. Here, I made a video. I made a custom video for you. Uh, have a look. Bam. Or I made a custom application. No, I made a video for you in regards to this job. Link. Something like that, you know. Or... Uh, I would like to apply to this uh, project link. So they click on that link, they can see the video. Or I made a video presentation uh, in regards to this job, Loom link. Okay, something like that. This is the best strategy, but you can write a cover letter. But guys, honestly, in the cover letter section, I would say something very simple. I would just say, I would like to apply for this job. I have a lot of experience with YouTube Shorts. Here's my portfolio. Look forward to hear back from you. That's it, guys. You don't have to paste in, oh, I'm very interested in video editing. I've been video editing for 10 years. I've, I've worked with hundreds of clients, blah, blah, blah. Guys, people don't, don't read beyond two free lines, okay? They want to see your portfolio and they want to know that you're going to actually solve their problem. So in this case, this guy is looking for YouTube shorts uh, editing, right? His problem is video editing for shorts. That's all you need to address and you need to show your portfolio. If you're a drop servicer, you're doing it for the very first time, you're going to go on Fiverr, you're going to type in YouTube uh, shorts editor, okay? You're going to pick any of these uh, providers and you're going to copy their work, okay? You have to either screen record it using a program like OBS, for example, or even Loom, okay? You can record it and crop it out and you're going to have a portfolio that you can send to this guy, okay? So you're going to put a portfolio in here or you can record it with... The point I'm trying to make, guys, if you're drop servicing, you don't need to invest time in getting your portfolio. For each of these projects, so for example, in this case, we're doing YouTube Shorts, Okay, so instead of you actually waiting until you get your first client, spending a lot of time without portfolio, you want to just take it from somebody that you're going to use. So if you're going to use this specific supplier, you just take it from here. Okay, and then you either record it with Loom 
or you um, record it with a screen recorder, for example, OBS, okay? And then once you have that portfolio, you can just paste it in the proposal section that way. That way, you actually apply with a portfolio because without a portfolio, applying to YouTube-related things, especially video editing, it's just, it's just no point, guys. Everybody wants to see a portfolio, okay? This is key, right? They don't want to see your cover letter. They don't want to see your CV. They want to see your portfolio of work. And if you're drop servicing, you need to get a good supplier and take their best pieces of information, best pieces of portfolio. Don't wait around until you get your first client. Just take it from one of these suppliers. And of course, guys, um, you have to be ethical. So for example, if you're going to use this specific supplier, it's just an example, right? You can use this portfolio. And then if you get that client, you're going to use this guy to edit that video because you don't want to promote your portfolio and then get other clients. Because first of all, this guy, if he finds out, he's going to be pissed off. And secondly, the quality mismatch could be huge. So maybe this guy is editing really well and the other supplier that you find is not editing well. So there's going to be a mismatch, okay? So guys, what are the five, um, you know, so now, now actually, actually, I've showed you the three strategies, okay? So we got buying email lists on Fiverr, right? We got emails from here. And then I showed you that you can submit a proposal to apply to any of these jobs. And I also told you that if you want to do it for free, um, you have to find a link of a client. Each video should look like one of my previous videos. Guys, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, let's open this. Sick of drought. So this guy is a potential client that we would find from Upwork. I hope he has an email. Yes, guys. Awesome. We're in luck. So this guy has an email here. So did you see, did you get one, what I did here? So I found YouTube AI niche editor role. Okay. It's been posted two hours ago, so it's very recent. And this guy says each video should look like one of my previous videos. And there's the link, okay? Then we go to this link, we end up here. So I now know that this guy is actually looking for a video editor because I found it on Upwork, okay? So instead of actually applying here, even though you can do that, you can just send him an email. Okay, because you got his email address and you know that he's hiring right now. So when you send him an email, you just, I'm going to give you a template later on in this video, what exactly to send. So you're going to be in luck, honestly. In this video, I'm going to give you everything, how to get a very fast drop sizing client. So I really, I'm really glad that we found this example, guys, because now you can see the process, how to find clients for YouTube from Upwork you know, uh, for free, for free, guys, completely free. This doesn't cost any money. You send an email to this guy saying, I want to apply uh, to work for your YouTube channel. Here's my portfolio, you know, and I found you on Upwork. Mention that you found him on Upwork. It's, it's, it's a good practice. If you find them on Upwork, then mention that you find them on Upwork, okay? There's more context as to why you're sending the email. It's less cold, okay? But again, guys, if, if, if it didn't have it, you could, again, do the same thing. Click apply now, right? And then you can actually set your rate. Um, you can add your cover letter, as we discussed. Either you write some text, add the portfolio, or you record a Zoom and paste the Zoom link in here. So guys, free strategies. I hope we're all clear as to what we're going to be using to find the first client. So you're going to be doing these three strategies to find clients. This is find clients. And then how do we land clients? This is going to be the next step, okay? Let's go back to this. So guys, this is this this part is going towards the end. So now I'm going to tell you how to actually what kind of services we're actually going to offer. Okay, so five services. YouTube long form video editing, okay? Number 1. Number 2. YouTube thumbnail design. So for example, if you go on to YouTube, um, let's just open YouTube, right? 
So for example, this, 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 these are thumbnails, okay? So you're gonna be offering a design service of these thumbnails. Number three is gonna be short form YouTube editing. So we go on YouTube, right? We're gonna see shorts, okay? Some of these are just ridiculous. Look at this woman, it's crazy, crazy. 105 million views, that's mad. Anyways, guys, um, so YouTube Shorts video editing is the next niche. And then we have YouTube Script Writing. What is YouTube Script Writing? So let's say we open up this video. Click on Show More. Actually, this is not a good example because he's so famous, this guy, that he doesn't even write the script. But... Uh, uh, let's find a video of somebody who is likely to write a script. I, I think this guy is likely to write a script. I think he's likely to write a script. Isaac Photo is a very big channel. I, I, think, I think he's actually likely to write a script because his videos are super detailed. Okay, his videos are super detailed and they have extremely good storylines. So I think he actually is having a script writer of some sort or even a producer. So maybe it's not a good example because you first of all, guys, as I mentioned in some of my videos, you have to be looking at channels between sort of 10 to 100,000, maybe up to 50,000 subscribers, not more. Because for example, this guy is too big. Like he already has a team of people working. But my point is this guy, you can clearly see from his videos that he definitely has some kind of a script writer so the idea, what is the idea? What is the text that he's going to be talking about, okay? So for example, when I'm preparing for this video, I write down some notes, what I'm going to talk about. Because guys, it's not easy to talk in front of camera and it's not easy to actually, for example, let's, let's, let's look at this one. So um, another, another example. Um, he's doing some kind of a presentation, Alex Hermosi, right? Do you think he's prepared? I think he is. He probably has some kind of a script in his head, okay? So the point is, the fourth service is script writing. So for these YouTubers, what is the script that they're going to talk about? Okay, what is the idea? And this is a service that is actually something that people pay for, believe it or not, okay? And then, guys, the final thing is YouTube SEO, how do I find YouTube SEO examples? Look at this. So YouTube SEO is nothing complicated, but it's really important because these videos have to rank. For example, you know, um, currently for drop servicing keywords, I rank as number in the, in, the, in the first 10 listings, I have, I, th I think now two videos actually. And as you guys watch more videos from me, my channel authority for that keyword and you know the titles and description and everything is gonna help to push my videos up and up and up in search. Okay, that's why YouTube SEO is very important. So I'm gonna show you an example what YouTube SEO actually means. Okay, because it's it's to somebody who's not a YouTuber, this could mean that you know what what is what is that like you know what is the service like what what exactly am do am I doing right? So YouTube SEO is basically the title, this description, okay, and tags, okay. So she has some tags: screenwriting, AI screenwriting, ChatGPT, ChatGPT limitations, negatives, whatever. Okay, guys? So this these are pretty much the three things that she's worried about when she uploads a new video. Every single video when you upload, you need to know this stuff, okay? So just to recap, long-form video content editing, short-form video content editing, thumbnails, script writing, YouTube SEO. Five exactly separate services that you can provide to YouTubers. Every single YouTuber on the platform who is active, who is constantly, you know, pushing out new content is somewhat of a need, somewhat of a need for those services. 
I guarantee you that, guys. Okay, especially the video editing part. You know, it's just it's just what it is, guys. So with those five services, you can think which one I want to go for or which two or three I want to go for. Think about, imagine yourself working on it and getting your first client. I really think that if you are a complete beginner, maybe you want to try with the easiest ones. And the very easiest one is YouTube thumbnails. Guess why? Because it's the cheapest one, okay? YouTube thumbnails usually cost around um, around 10 to 15 bucks. She is paying for YouTube thumbnail designer 100%. Like, I've been on YouTube, I've edited videos for YouTubers, I've edited thumbnails for YouTubers. I can see from this thumbnail that she doesn't uh, do it herself. 100%. She's paying somebody. This thumbnail with all these designs is done by a professional designer. She's not doing that. 100%. 100%. Unless she's a graphic designer who has a graphic design degree and worked as a graphic designer for ages because this is very high quality thumbnails, okay? So this would be the very easiest option, okay? Because here's the thing, guys. If you're selling a thumbnail like this and these are quite actually quite detailed, Right, so can you charge 20 bucks? If she's in North America, let's go to the about section again. Where is she from? South Africa, okay, interesting. Um, if From, from the design of her thumbnails, it looks like she's from California or something because they are so like Hollywood style thumbnails, you know. But anyways, guys, the point is, if she is in North America and ideally in a very, very um, uh, wealthy state like you know California, New York or something, and the channel is somewhat of a bigger one, so 50,000 to 100,000 subscribers, for example, that kind of level, I think you can charge around 20 bucks for a good thumbnail because thumbnails are super important. Channels know that. With a good thumbnail, you can actually land a lot of views, get a lot of views, guys. If the thumbnail is crap, I'm gonna look, I'm gonna show you some good ones. Five minute crafts, their thumbnails are crazy, guys. Look at this. Um, so this guy is a channel that is extremely, extremely, extremely good with thumbnails. Have a look at these thumbnails. Can you see how effective they are, right? Just look at them. You want to click on this stuff because it just makes total sense. Look, you can put headphones on her head, right? You can make your own pen. Look, if you have children, you can make a house like this out of, out of a simple table. Can you see that? But what's even crazier is I think this is a, their derivative channel. Where is their main channel? Look at those. Those thumbnails are even more impressive, guys. Look at the popular ones. Look at this. This is an iconic thumbnail. This is one of the best thumbnails on the entire YouTube. You know, an exception would be maybe Mr. Beast has also epic thumbnails. But these guys are nailing video thumbnail after video thumbnail. It's absolutely incredible what they're doing, right? So, for example, here, how do you draw a perfect circle? It's an incredible thumbnail, guys, right? So if you can provide and if you can find a supplier who's going to do thumbnails like that, guys, you can easily charge 20 bucks, okay? Now, where do you find these? Of course, you find them on Fiverr. Again, guys, YouTube thumbnail designer, thumbnail designer. Um... Am I saying that you should go for the first uh, few listings? No. In most of my videos, I don't say that. 42,000 people providing the service. It's, it's not, not, it doesn't make sense, guys. Okay. Also, look, some of these people are actually charging a lot of money. Okay. So I think 20 bucks as a complete beginner is absolutely doable. But as you can see, some people are charging even more than that, 30 $40, $50, nearly $50. I think this is pushing it a bit too far. 
But my point is, if you're selling a thumbnail for 20 bucks, maybe 19 bucks, you can you can say just so it looks less than 20, okay? Then you find a supplier on Fiverr, ideally at around five or six or seven bucks. You're gonna book in around 13, 14 dollars of pure profit. So, guys, it's it's not that difficult to get the first client for YouTube thumbnails because it's it's a very small price to pay, right? So somebody can try out your service for just mere 20 bucks, okay? But here's why starting with small steps is actually not a bad strategy. Think about it. So first you get a YouTube thumbnail designer and you create a thumbnail, for example, um, for, for the channel that I just uh, showed you, for this Margaret, right? So you, you make a thumbnail for her. And she's actually doing that, look. She has that slash and there's two actions. Yeah, the thumbnails of this uh, channel are actually very, very good. You know, very, very good. So first of all, let's just say you're a thumbnail designer for this channel. So you make her the first thumbnail and she's happy. Then you make her the second thumbnail and she's happy. Then you make her the third thumbnail and she's happy. Your supplier is starting to be happy as well and you're booking in profit. And then the next step would be to look into the shorts section and then you realize, oh, actually, she's also doing shorts and she's not getting that many views. 72, 63, 120, 227. She's good looking and she's not even getting views. That doesn't make sense, right? Maybe the editing is wrong, okay? So what you tell her is, look, Margaret, um, I really enjoy making your thumbnails. What about if I actually try out some shorts editing. Just send me some footage or maybe send me some footage from your previous videos that didn't do well, right? And I'm gonna make you YouTube shorts and if you upload it, you see if it performs better or not. And uh, the price of my short is, let's say 30 bucks. Okay, guys? So you're already making thumbnails. You have an easy route to talk to Margaret about the next service, right? And then it's it's a natural progression, right? So you're doing a slightly bigger job for her now, okay? Okay, so, and she, let's say you find, you then go to Fiverr, right? And then you type in YouTube Shorts Editor, okay? Now, you're gonna find a video editor, let's say, I would say 10 bucks. 10 bucks is how much you wanna pay, no more, okay? So then, Margaret will pay you 30 bucks, right? You're gonna spend 10 bucks, you're gonna book in 20 bucks. So now you're booking money from two different services. She's happy, she's getting now more views. Hopefully the supplier that you found is good. If, if you didn't find a good supplier, because this is a bit more complicated, this is like moving images, right? It's shorts. It's no longer a static image, right? You if you if you if you think that the 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 you know the, the short is not good enough then you find another supplier who's going to be even better okay and you can do that behind the scenes so, so she doesn't need to know that so you give yourself some time for example you say look uh, give me the footage and i'm going to come back to you in like 5 days okay because you're already working with, with her doing her thumbnails she's going to give you those 5 days or maybe a week and within that time you can find a good supplier, right? And then once you find a really good supplier that hopefully you send it to her, hopefully she uploads and she starts getting more views, okay, for her shorts. And then her lights, her, her eyes will light up and she's gonna be like, oh, that's great. He's providing some good value. Um, Okay, cool. And then you go to her video section and then you think, hmm, so I'm providing her two services right now. What if I offered her video editing as well? And then you um, talk to her again and you say, Margaret, dear, I'm providing you two services right now. I'm doing shorts and I'm doing thumbnails. What about if I actually edit your videos as well, the long form videos? And then she's probably gonna be like, oh, I already have a video editor or, oh, I'm doing it myself. 
where you say, just send me the footage, let me do something with it, and come back to you, okay? I'm already working for you. I'm doing. I'm delivering you good results. Please just give me a ch- give me a chance, okay? And hopefully she says yes, right? Then she sends you some footage, and then you hopefully find either a new supplier or even use the same one that's editing your shorts. Hopefully he's he's capable of actually editing long form uh, format videos as well. And then you guys, you 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 create an incredible video. Hopefully better editing than this. You come back to her and you say, okay, so for these videos, they're around uh, three to 10, three to 15 minutes, roughly, as I can see from her channel. Some longer, but average between three to 15 minutes, okay? So you say, look, if your video is under five minutes, it's gonna be 60 bucks. If it's over, uh, if it's 10 to 15 minutes, it's gonna be, let's say, 100 bucks. And then you either find a new editor, as I said, or you use the existing shorts editor and you want to get around 50% uh, profit or 60, 70% profit again. So this is the yet another revenue stream for you, right? And hopefully you upload and hopefully she's getting more views again. But now she's getting more views on her YouTube videos, no, not shorts. So you're doing thumbnails, you're doing shorts, and now you're doing long form videos for her. And now she's like, gosh, this guy knows what he's doing. Like, I'm giving him so much work and he just keeps on delivering. It's crazy. Master of all, jack of all trades, basically. But in the background, you're just finding suppliers, collecting the money, paying the suppliers and keeping the profit. Okay, then at some point, uh, you talk to Margaret again, maybe give it, get a week because, you, you know, you, t- you don't want to do it too quickly because then she's just going to be like, oh, I'm just giving the entire, you know, channel away to you and you just pretty much manage my entire channel. Then you say, look, Margaret, actually, I think that you're not getting views because, you know, your SEO is not very good. People are not finding you, you know, so, you know, you, you, you're producing incredible quality videos, but for some reason you're getting you know, two, 300 views, 400 views, right? In some cases, after a month, you just have 200 views, even though the videos are incredible. I think you have a problem when it comes to SEO. Right, and then guys, what you tell her is, look, give me one of your videos, tell me what it's gonna be, or give me the footage, give me the thumbnail, and I'm also going to write you the title, the description, and the tags and let's see how it performs okay then you find a youtube editor on here sorry not editor youtube seo expert okay and then find one of these guys you this is a bit more tricky okay you need to know what you're doing with youtube seo because this is not visible right this is going to be text So you need to find a good supplier, guys. Um, This guy has the most amount of um, feedbacks. This guy has some feedbacks. But again, there is a ton of services available, okay? And then hopefully you ask for, again, around, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to price it as a complete beginner, but I would say 20, maybe 25 bucks for a YouTube SEO package, okay? So hopefully, once you get the SEO uh, assets as well, the title, the tags, and the description, you actually send all of that information to her, she uploads it on her channel, and ne- and then after a few days, give it a week, because SEO actually takes time. So YouTube needs to understand what a video is about, needs to rank it in the search, right? And hopefully, then she starts getting even more views, okay? This is not guaranteed, but it should. If the SEO is good, it should. So guys, here's the thing. At that point, you're now almost providing the entire full package for her. Like you're you're pretty much an agency doing all of the stuff. What is left is actually clicking the upload button and also the idea. What is the video gonna be about? You know. What is the video going to be, 
you know, the topic, the the idea that, uh, you know, this is the hard part as well, because she, if she she's doing it full time or not full time, doesn't matter. But every single time when she's about to create a new video, she needs to think about what the video is going to be about, right? What is the idea? What is the plot? What is the, um, you know, and that's the thing, guys. Then you you say, Margaret, so you see that all of these four services have performed really well on your channel. Um, you know, why don't we try another thing? And that is actually, I've done a lot of work for clients when it comes to YouTube script writing and the ide ideation as well. And she might be like, uh, but yeah, you're almost doing everything already. Like, uh, you know, I'm a bit scared of just giving away yeah, another thing to you because you're almost running my channel now. But you say, look, I've done four services for you so far and I'm doing them on a consistent basis. You see how good the quality is, right? You see how your views are growing. Give me a chance. Give me, give me this as well and see how it works. If it works, we do it. If it doesn't, we can just stick to those four things. And she says, okay, I want another video talking about chat GPT, for example, I want to make a chat GPT tutorial, okay? And um, what you do, you go on Fiverr again, and you type in YouTube script writing, writer, actually. Yeah. And you find some suppliers. Again, guys, this is even more complicated in a way than a thumbnail as well because, of course, you need to understand if the script is good. So you need to have pretty good English language so, so you can understand. So if, what is the script that these guys are going to deliver to you? You have to read it and you have to understand if it's going to be of a good, you know, of a good value to her and if the idea is going to be good, if it's a coherent text, right? And guys, um, you know, you of course have to talk to a client and ask whether they're looking for a complete script, which is like word for word, so can they can read it from a teleprompter, because some, some channels do that, um, or they improvise like me, where I actually don't have a script at all. I just have some bullet points that I need to talk about in the video, okay? And, uh, and then you just say, look, if it's word by word, of course, it's going to be more expensive. So it's not going to be 20 bucks. Word by word, 10 minute video is, is going to be like 30 bucks minimum. Okay, maybe 35. And then if it's just both points, uh, it could be 15, 20 bucks. Okay. So again, on Fiverr, you want to find a script writer, maybe test a couple. Okay, maybe ask for some samples. Ask for some samples. Actually, always ask for some samples because you want to see before you engage any of these guys. You want to see how the quality, what the quality is like. You want to get their portfolio, right? Ask for the link. Click on this. Now, contact me. Click on that button and then say, guys, that's how you do it, right? So you click on the button and you, you say, send me your portfolio. Send me the scripts, sample scripts that you've delivered for previous uh, clients, okay? Because he has reviews, so it means he's, he's done it, right? And of course, you want to you wanna find people who, who have adequate number of uh, reviews, so at least 50 reviews, okay, for, for a service like that. And look, again, 17,000 services available. Huge amount, guys. Huge amount, guys. And then you hopefully get your YouTube script for the next uh, video of, of Margaret, which is going to be ChatGPT tutorial, okay? And then you actually deliver that script to her before she makes her next video. And if that script is good, she makes the video, she uploads it. Now she's saying, actually, I'm getting more views. I'm, I have less work, right? I'm getting the thumbnail. I'm getting the script. I'm getting the SEO. I'm getting the shorts editing and I also get the full long form video editing as well all from this one guy can you see that guys how how it progresses right it progresses to a point where you're almost a YouTube full service management agency okay uh, the, the last thing would be for you to actually just upload the video and I believe that is also possible I think 
you can get an a admin or moderator access uh, to to any of the channels, and then you can actually upload the videos as well. So I think that is possible. So you can you could in theory just create a sort of full service YouTube automation agency uh, for these channels. I'm not talking about YouTube automation when it comes to making faceless videos. I'm talking about real people making real videos, and you do all the services for them. Right, and you even upload the video. That would be sick, right? Uh, maybe you upload a video that's like five bucks or something, you know. So you can charge for that as well, guys. But of course, again, you need to start start with small things. People need small bites. They 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 don't eat the whole cake. They need a small bite, and then you progress, 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 progress. Okay. So thumbnails is the easiest one. Then short form video editing. Then long form video editing. Okay, then SEO and then script writing. Okay, this would be kind of the progress, how you move. But guys, of course, we're talking about how to get the first drop size in clients. So maybe you just start with thumbnails and do thumbnails for a couple of months. Okay, or maybe you start with short form video editing and you do short form video editing for a year. Or maybe you just do long form video editing and you just do it. So I'm not saying that you should go for all these five services. I'm just telling you that there is an option of having five different individual services. Uh, all of them will vary in price. Obviously, thumbnails being the cheapest and then long form video editing being the most expensive together with uh, script writing because it's also quite expensive to come up with these ideas and actually write a word by word script. Right. So guys, now... Uh, we end up in a position where we actually get the emails. We we know all the services. And what do we need to do next, guys? The next is we need to send them an email. So now we have an email, right? So, and of course, I already kind of assumed that you got uh, Margaret as a client, but we needed from those emails, we needed to, of course, send her the email and make her interested. So if you apply through Upwork, you don't really, really need to do that. But if you don't, you're going to need an email template. Okay. So in this video, I've had that prepared for you. And this is one of the templates that I've actually used to, to get clients. So when you, first of all, guys, create something like this. Okay. Google Sheets template, YouTuber email list, name it like that. Put channel name, channel link, channel email, owner's name, if you can get it, okay? Sometimes you can get it. Email sent, second, third, fourth, fifth, and the result. So let's assume, we already assumed that we got Margaret as a client, but let's assume we filled in her name. I got it from her YouTube uh, about page. Uh, I put in channel link. And why are these things useful? Because then you can customize the email. Why is this useful? You can quickly go to her channel if she responds to you, because you're obviously going to be reaching out to a lot of people. If this channel responds to you, you can quickly go here and see what is the channel about, right? Channel email, we need that to contact her. Ch owner's name, super important as well. We can customize the email again. This is channel's name. This is not owner's name. So sometimes the owner's name is Margaret, but this is, for example, finance uh, simplified or something. That's why this seems similar, but it's not. Owner's name are usually person's name, and this is something different name. Right, and then, guys, you send the first email. Let's say it's today's date, right? You send the first email. If you get the client, then you just say, got client. If you didn't get a client, no response after a couple of days, give it two, three days, you're gonna have to follow up, guys, okay? And the follow-up, so the first message, as we discussed, is gonna be this. In the title, you're gonna type in partnership proposal for your channel. Can you see just how simple and powerful that is, okay? So if you're a YouTuber, the size of Margaret's channel. She's at 18,000 subscribers, right? She's had a lot of videos uploaded. And um, if you see this title, you're going to click on it. Even if it goes to spam, you're likely going to click on it because these YouTubers, they check their spam folder quite often, okay? So she might even go to her spam folder if it lands in spam for whatever reason, okay? If it goes to promotions, she's likely to check that, right? Because... It's everybody wants to have a, a partnership. 
everybody wants to have a partnership. May, the person's going to assume that it's a paid partnership. That's why this title is very good. And I've been using it many, many times, hundreds of thousands, actually thousands of emails, not hundreds, thousands and thousands of emails sent with this exact uh, title and got tons of clients. Now, when it comes to email text, this is what we want. Super simple, sharp as attack, sharp as attack. We're not enthusiastic because this is an email. We're going to get to the enthusiastic part, guys, and we're going to get to the expert part. But in this email text, we need to be sharp. So, hi, Margaret. Do you need a video editor for your channel? Super simple. There's no, you know, fluff. Super simple, straightforward, and obvious. And then here's one of my example videos. Of course, add your URL. So, if you're a drop servicer, you have to get it uh, from a supplier on Fiverr. Just find one supplier and you upload their videos on YouTube, set it as private, and you're going to have a link. Or you can set it as unlisted. So create a YouTube channel, upload the video, and set it as private or unlisted, and you're going to have one video. As I teach you guys, you just, you just need one video. Just one extremely good video, right? And usually, I notice this. If people watch this video and it's extremely good, they're actually going to reply to you, okay? So this video has to be so good that when they see that video, they're like, gosh, I, I need to reply to this video editor. It's, it's really good, okay? And the only way you're going to do it, if you're a video editor yourself, you have to create an incredible video. And um, if, you, you know, if, if you're drop servicing, then you need to find a very good uh, supplier from Fiverr or... Upwork or an alternative place and upload that uh, uh, their, their sample basically, and then copy that URL onto here. YouTube will give you a URL once you upload your your portfolio. Create a channel yourself. Uh, call it, uh, for example, uh, you can call it like video editing uh, freedom or something like that. You know that channel that channel's purpose is not to get views. That channel's purpose is to Show your portfolio to these clients. That's and and it's free as well to create a YouTube channel to upload your portfolio. So there's no reason why you shouldn't do that. Okay, I don't recommend putting it on Dropbox or um, you know Mega or 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 uh, Google Drive or something. Put it on YouTube because these YouTubers they know YouTube and it's very low risk for them to click on this link because they see it's going straight to YouTube. Okay, and then what we say is if you like what you see in the example video, and you want to increase your views, everybody wants to increase their views, exactly as everybody wants a partnership. You know, everybody wants to increase their views. Let me know, and I can become your editor too. Best, and that's your name as well, right? So this email template, we're sending it first time, and we're putting in the date, okay? Second, follow-up is around two, three days later. Then we put... You know, two, three days later, we put the date. If you don't get a reply, again, two, three days later, you have to send it again, okay? Then again, give around five days, send again. And then give around five days, send again. And then hopefully, if in either of these stages, you actually get a client, just type in go a client, okay? And that's it, you got a client. If you didn't, repeat the same for all the leads that you do it for, okay, guys? As I said, when it comes to email marketing, you can send it from just your Gmail, simple Gmail. If you're not sending massive volume, like tens of thousands of emails, you can do it from your Gmail, okay? If you want to send more than a thousand emails, it's not within the scope of this uh, tutorial because in this tutorial, we're talking about how to get your very first drop servicing client, okay? And getting the very first drop servicing client, as I explained in this video, you should be able to get it from 1,000 emails of YouTubers, and I explained how to get those emails. So 1,000 emails you should be able to send from just a simple Gmail. So let's open a calculator and quickly calculate how we're going to do this. So we have 1,000 emails. Let's assume you collected it yourself manually. Maybe you bought an email list or maybe you found it on Upwork. Getting 1,000 emails on Upwork is going to be a challenge, but but maybe you don't even need that. Maybe you find 20 emails and you get one client. Now, um, let's just say 
we're doing it manually and we are collecting emails from the about page. Let's just say that because guys, this is a cheap and free option. Yeah, so that's that's what email. It takes like a couple of minutes. If you if you buy it from 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 Fiverr, guys, it's it's, it's not going to take you any time. Almost, you just buy it and you wait until it's delivered. So there's no time. But how to actually send a thousand emails? So I recommend you do this. You create five Gmail accounts. Okay, divided by five. So if you're sending 200 emails per day from five Gmail accounts, you, you're you going to be sending 200 emails per day, okay? That is actually a bit too much, guys. So what I recommend you to do is I recommend you actually to spread it out across two weeks. So you need 14 days divided by five Gmails. You've got 14 Gmails, 14.3 Gmails essentially. So yeah, 14.28 um, emails, sorry, not Gmails, emails. Then we multiply it by 14 days and then we multiply it by five and we arrive at the thousand. So do you get my point? Five free Gmail accounts, two weeks, and we're sending not very many Gmails per account. And guys, you are going to be able to send a thousand emails and I think the chance of you getting at least one client to sign up for a thumbnail design or for short design, I, I recommend to start with thumbnails because it's it's very, very easy to get a thumbnail design uh, job, guys, 100%. It depends on your appetite for risk, right? Um, I, I, I wouldn't actually recommend you to start with script writing or uh, SEO because these kind of services are a bit more complicated. You need to understand something more than just, you know, short form video editing and thumbnails. These are kind kind of easy. So when 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 you get on the call, for example, right, you're going to be able to explain what you're going to do. Oh, I'm just going to create a thumbnail and you're going to show some examples. Or I'm going to create shorts. You're going to show some examples of your service provider or if you're a freelancer, your own. It's very easy, right? But when it comes to SEO, you'll know you need to know a bit more, right? When it comes to script writing, you'll need to know a bit more. So that's why I'm saying start with the easiest ones and then add the other services later on down the line. Okay, guys? So here's the thing. What we need to do then, guys, is once we actually email the client, we type in got client here. The next step is we, guys, move on to the next part, which is how do we actually win most of the drop servicing deals, okay? So what is the process for us to actually not just outreach to those 1,000 uh, YouTubers, but actually get at least a few clients? So from 1,000 emails, Let's say you're offering YouTube thumbnails or uh, short form content as, as a complete first step. How do we send a thousand emails and how do we actually get more clients? So first of all, guys, is as I said, the message is, 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 is super simple. But what happens when they reply? So when they reply to this, it's going to be one of the following replies. What is your pricing? Next, what can you do? You have more examples of work, okay? And then I'm interested. These are usually the three things that they 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 say, okay? So, first thing is what is the price? And here's what I would say: is uh, I'm glad that you're interested. Let's say the 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 the, the name of the person who replies is. Uh, let's say John, okay? Because if you find the name of the person, when he replies, sometimes in the signature, you'll see the name, always have their name. So you'll say, hi, John, uh, I'm glad that you're interested and I'm glad that you found my uh, sample interesting or something like that. And you're going to say, actually, I forgot one thing. I forgot one thing I need to say. In here, 
so the message, uh, the initial message was um, this. And then when it comes to follow-ups, guys, I didn't give you the message. So the message with follow-ups is usually this. Hi, comma, any updates, question mark. That's it. And you do that every single time. Second, third, fourth, fifth. Hi, comma, any update, question mark. That's it. Nothing else, guys. Every single time, the same message. And also, follow-ups are super important. I got a lot of clients, guys, uh, for video editing from follow-ups. Extremely important. Don't get afraid if you send a thousand emails, right, and nobody replies. Or you get a few reply, but not as many as you expect. When you send the entire chain up to five follow-ups, your reply rate will go up two, three times, four times, and maybe five times. Honestly, guys, replies are super important because sometimes these people, uh, they don't check their email wherever, they miss it. They have too many emails, wherever, guys. Replies, uh, the follow-ups are extremely important. Okay, let's get back to this. So basically, how do we actually win more drop servicing deals after we send the initial email? We get a client, right? And then, sorry, we get a client interested. And then what happens then? So usually, once we send this email, they ask for the price. And my strategy is usually this. I do not want to tell them the price on the email. I just don't want to do that. Because if it's going to be too little, they're going to be annoyed. If it's going to be too much, they're going to be annoyed. Okay, And if it's neutral, then they don't know what to do. So the best case scenario, always, is to schedule a call. So I know it is very easy to just reply with a price. But the point is not to reply with the price. The point is that you need to land a client, guys. That's the point. All this communication, right, is all about landing a client, guys. Okay? I want you to land clients. I don't want you to reply with quotes and prices and stuff like that. Land clients. The only way you're going to land clients with huge success is by talking to them on a phone, on Google Meets, on Zoom, anywhere where they hear your voice. Because the chances of you landing a client like that is going to be so, so much harder than just email. It's very easy to reply to an email, but when you talk to somebody, that's a much bigger emotional bond, right? So guys, here's the thing. Once, once they reply to you asking what the price is, your response should be, hi, John, thanks for, uh, so, so, hi, John, I'm glad that you liked my portfolio. Before we talk about price, I would love to have a quick five-minute conversation uh, to you, for example, on Google Hangouts, sorry, Google Meets, or WhatsApp to discuss your requirements. When would you be available? Question mark. Something like this, okay? And here's the thing. Why are we doing that? Of course we can reply. Of course we can tell them the information on the email. But that's not the point. We need to get on a call because that's where we're going to land the client, okay? Again, guys. Second thing, I told you, a lot of people uh, will say, do you have more, uh, more uh, examples of your work? I don't know. This is a tricky one. I usually also reply kind of the same thing. Yeah, I have a lot of uh, different examples of my work. Uh, would you be happy to, to schedule a call and we can go for those in the call? And, you know, when are you available? Question mark. Again, any question that they bounce to you, it goes back to the same thing. You want to get on the call. If they don't reply, then it doesn't matter. If they say, I'm not interested, then it doesn't matter. But then, final thing I said uh, that they might say straight away, I'm interested. What do you do in that position? Do you just say, oh, my price is this? or No, again, going to the call. Again, so, hi, John. I'm glad that you liked my example portfolio. 
and I'm really glad that you're interested. Uh, when would you be interested? Sorry, when would you be available for a quick five minute call? Question mark. So the point is, this email, or you know, if you're doing outreach on Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever, this email, guys, this message, the entire point of it, regardless of what they say later, is all about getting to the call. Because once you get to the call, you're going to land a client much more than during these emails. Can you land clients just with emails? Of course. Of course. I've done that plenty of times. But when you get to a call, the success of you landing a client is going to be orders of magnitude higher. Okay? So guys, let's assume that you actually got through you know, they reply to you and they say something like, after you send that email asking for the call, they say, yeah, I would like to have a call. I, I you know, I'm interested in this, whatever. And uh, I'm available, let's say tomorrow or something. Then here's what you're going to do, guys. You want to suggest a few time slots when you can attend the call. So you have to be the first person suggesting the time when the call should happen, and you should be the person suggesting where the call happens. I actually recommend WhatsApp, Google Meets, and Zoom. These free platforms. Google Meets is free, WhatsApp is free, so it's super easy, guys, to do, and um, WhatsApp has a limitation that you need to have their phone number, so there is a little bit of a barrier of entry. So ideally, you're actually using Google Meets, and for Google Meets, you just need their Gmail account or email, any email actually. Um, and, and you say, you know, would tomorrow 5 p.m. work for you? If yes, I'm going to send you an email invite. And if they reply yes or I'll be there or something, you create a Google Meet meeting. Google Meet. You go here. Yeah, new meeting. You click create a meeting for later. You click on that and then you add their uh, email. That's it. And then you get a link that you will share with this client. So you're going to reply. Here's the link. Tomorrow, 5 p.m., we're going to meet. And this, guys, is extremely effective strategy. Again, if you're more comfortable with WhatsApp, you can do WhatsApp. Then there is a bit of a barrier to entry because you actually need to get their WhatsApp number. So then your reply would be, instead of saying, you know, are you available for a call, whatever, you, 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 you would add that in the first reply. So you would say, would you be available for a quick five-minute call? Uh, what is your WhatsApp number? Question mark. So... Then when they reply, hopefully they reply already with that number saying, yes, I'm available for if I'm in call, here's my number. And then you would reply on WhatsApp straight away. You won't reply here. You'll add them on WhatsApp as quickly as possible and you just say, hi, John, thanks for giving me your phone number. Uh, now we can communicate on here. When would you be available for a quick WhatsApp call? Can you see what I did here? Guys, the point of this email is to get to a phone call or video call stage. That's the whole point. Doesn't matter what they're asking. It doesn't matter. They could ask a whole lot of other questions. You don't care. You want to help them, right? And you want to provide value for them? They don't know that. They don't yet know that. But you know that you're going to provide good value, hopefully, right? At a sensible price. So your job is to make their life as easy as possible, as simple as possible to land a client like this, okay? There has to be almost no work from their side. It has to be so simple that they literally don't have to think about it. It has to be so smooth, right? And then when you get to the phone call stage, we are talking about this now, guys. <laughs> that was smooth, right? Right, so how to win almost all drop sizing deals. So we're no longer now talking about the strategies, how to actually get to the call, video call with Google Meets or WhatsApp call. Now we're talking about how to actually win 
all, almost all job servicing deals. So in some of my previous videos, if you guys have been watching my videos many times, right, uh, or all of the videos, you will know that in some videos I say that I usually land around 90% of clients where I speak on the, on, the, on the phone, either WhatsApp or Google Meet. It's a high closing rate. I appreciate that. It's a very high closing rate. But I'm going to tell you how you can do the same thing, guys. You know, so if you follow my exact process, right, you're going to close much higher numbers. I want you to be closing at least 50% of people that you talk on the phone or um, WhatsApp or video calls, okay? At least 50%. For me, it's right around 90%, but for you, I want at least 50%. With time, you're going to get better and better and better, okay? So in, at the beginning of the video, I was talking about the Jordan Belfort's straight line sales process. Sharp as attack, enthusiastic as hell, and expert in your field. These three things you need to have to land more clients during the course, okay? Of course, guys, I'm not saying that if you don't have these things, you're not going to land clients. No, definitely not. But if you have them, you're going to land a lot more clients. So I'm going to give you some examples of course, how you would um, introduce yourself, you know, what you would say to the client, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So in this video, I'm gonna provide you that as well. So here's the thing, guys. First of all, imagine this situation. Imagine that um, on this phone, right, current American president is calling you, you know, Joe Biden is calling you. You know that Joe Biden is calling you. You don't know anything else, but you just know that. How are you gonna feel? Your, your, you know, your legs are going to shake and you, you're going you're gonna to sweat, right? Most people would because you know that that person is important even though it's just another person, right? If you didn't know who he is, you wouldn't care, right? But because you know who he is, suddenly he's, he's, he's an authority. That's why most people would be, you know, they... they there would be there would be tension in them, right? So that's how I want my clients to feel. When I talk to them, according to Jordan Belfort, at least, and according to his straight line process, and according to my uh, my tests, and I've I've done sales for years, guys. Okay, of clients, whatever. Is the first few seconds. Jordan says the first four seconds are the most important time during any of the calls because at that point, the client is creating a visual image in their head. So if you're, if you're talking on WhatsApp without video, they already create some kind of an image in their head. Who is the person? And I know I have a lot of viewers from around the world, all kinds of countries. People are watching me from everywhere. But I can tell you one thing, guys. Honestly, it does not matter where you're from. My English language is not native. I speak a good English. I've lived in UK for 10 years. Uh, but the point is, if you have good English, honestly, it doesn't matter where you're from. Because at the end of the day, your client wants some problem solved. So for example, if they, if they want to have more views, right? They need a better thumbnail design. If you wanna, if if they wanna have less time spent on their YouTube channel, they can hire a video editor. So you're solving some kind of a problem. Honestly, they absolutely do not care where you're from. Hundred percent. And you can be an authority to them. You can be an expert in your field, regardless of where you're from. Hundred percent, guys. I'm telling you that. Some of the biggest channels in YouTube. They have video editors from Asia, India, and stuff. 100%. I know that because I know those channels, right? And it doesn't matter. You could, you know, there are some great uh, editors in the United States. There are some great editors in the UK, wherever. But it absolutely is not about being an expert means where you're from. So forget all the things like that, guys. If anything, that kind of thing 
uh, sets you back. So for example, let's say you're from Africa. Some people watch my videos from Africa. If you think that you're from Africa and it puts you at some kind of a disadvantage, no, not in this stuff. Because in here, it's all based on your portfolio. If you have excellent portfolio, right? Either you're drop servicing or you're freelancing. Nobody cares as slightest where you're from, guys. What people care about is what you can deliver for them, for their channel, how you can make their life easier, bring them more views, and, you know, make, solve one of their problems, basically, okay? When it comes to YouTube. So five services I gave you, right? These are all kind of a problem because every time they create a new video, they need to do all those five things themselves, okay? If they don't have a video editor, if they don't have a script writer, if they don't have an SEO person, they have to do it themselves. So how can you be an expert? You can have a good portfolio, okay? SEO, again, how are you gonna show a portfolio of SEO? You have to show an example video on YouTube which has perfect title, perfect description, perfect tags. Again, if you're outsourcing it from Fiverr, ask for a Fiverr seller to give you a, some examples of videos on YouTube and where you're gonna see all this stuff so you can show it to your client. Okay, guys? Of course, don't tell the supplier that you're gonna find clients uh, based on this video, but that's what you're gonna do anyway. So, and then guys, so how do we actually win most clients? Sharp as attack, enthusiastic as hell, an authority, or an expert in your field. So we are nailing the third part by having an incredible good portfolio. So when you, uh, go to my message again, right? Where am I saying that I'm a good video editor? Nowhere. I'm not saying, oh, I'm the best video editor. I'm the best video editor. Do you need a video editor? I, I don't even say I'm a good video editor, let alone best, right? I'm just giving the example. And that's how we set the authority from the first few seconds that we interact with any client, right? Can you see how, how powerful this is, right? But this sample has to speak for itself, guys. If this is crap, then it's not good. Then we're not an expert and not an authority. So find another supplier. The sample has to be so good where you click on it and you're instantly hooked. You're like, oh my gosh, this editing is crazy good. So for example, Alex Hermosi's style videos are like that. You, you open a short and it's just like, yeah, it's good quality. You know what I mean? You, you can see that straight away. You watch for a few seconds, you, you know the quality is good. The text is uh, really nice and, you know, there's no random cuts and, you know, the sound is good. And every single good video editor that you're going to outsource to or if you are a video editor and you're a freelancer, you need something like that, okay? So we are doing the third part straight away. But when we get to this stage, guys, and we actually get on the call, then imagine again that, you know, uh, I, I want, guys, I want your clients within the first few seconds to feel like they're speaking to an important person, an expert in the field. So how can you do that? First of all, of course, as I said, I just said, the portfolio has to be incredible. So on the call, how can you portray yourself as an expert? So instead of saying, oh, I have really good video editing. Oh, it's really good. We're going to bring you a lot of views. So did you see the example video? And the person's going to be like, yeah, yeah, I've seen the example video. It's really good. Exactly. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I've worked with many clients. I'm glad that you like the video. Done. Because the video is so good, there's nothing to talk about. The quality is already assumed. We're past that. We're done. The next stage is thinking about, you know, the price and, and stuff like this, guys. We're going to talk about it very soon in the next section. But we're done. Guys, that's it. The quality aspect and you being an authority is done. Because you tell the client that you know how to edit really good videos and the proof is the video portfolio that you sent to them, okay? Now, sharp as attack. What is that? 
Tack is basically, you can, you can if, if you don't know this saying, is basically sharp as a knife. That's what it means, okay? Sharp. So I know every single word that comes off my mouth is for a reason. And guys, you know, I'm not telling you that you have to become an expert in sales, but what I'm telling you guys is the better you get at sales, the more clients you're going to land and the more money you're going to make. So it is worth you practicing with either your friends or family or wherever because, you know, the more practice you have, the better you're going to get. And as I said, I'm closing like 90% of clients when I get on the phone because I've done it so many times. I've spoken to so many different clients. And also, once you speak to more clients, you're also going to get better. So ideally, you're practicing on clients. You're skipping the first part of, you know, practicing with, or you can practice in front of a mirror. Some salespeople do that, okay? So, of course, it's not the same as speaking to a person live and knowing what to respond every single time they say something different that you expected. But it is possible, guys. Do it in front of a mirror. Okay, and then, guys, so enthusiastic? What do I mean by enthusiastic? Let me show an example. Let's assume that um, I scheduled a call. From the first second, I need to make sure not going to call anybody. I'm just going to illustrate my point. I need to make sure that the client portrays me as an expert, first of all, and second of all, that I'm in control. That's what it means, okay? So I'm, give you, I'm going to give you a good example and I'm give you, going to give you a bad example, okay? So here's... I've, and I've actually, guys, I've done this so many times because I've actually hired freelancers many times from for my drop servicing projects, okay? From Fiverr, from Facebook groups, from LinkedIn, from all sorts of places. I've actually spoken to freelancers and I've seen this so many times. I've seen this. So imagine somebody is calling me and saying this. Hi, uh, yes, so what you're interested in? Ah, uh, Okay. Yeah, I can I can help with that. A lot of freelancers and drop services. It, guys, it's not powerful. So let's say you, you know the name of the person because you spoke by email. And let's just say we're calling Margaret, right? She let's say let's say she agreed to have the call. Hi Margaret, how are you? Awesome. Great. Yeah, so I hope that you liked uh, my portfolio video and now I'm going to tell you exactly everything, how I work, the pricing and all the information that you need to work with me successfully and have the best videos in the world. Would you be interested in having a chat about that? Guys, I'm not saying this was great or whatever. Maybe it was a bit over the top, maybe it was a bit pushy, but can you see how much better that sounds, right? Honestly, guys, just... Just believe me, if you do this, you're gonna land at least 50% of clients. If you do the first thing where you're extremely humble and, and, and being like, yeah, I would love to work with you. Oh, I love your channel, this is so great. Oh, I'd love to make at least one video and just try out of working together. I'm gonna create you the perfect video. It's gonna have more views and it's going to be so good that you're going to want another one from me tomorrow. Guys, do you see my point? So you have to be extremely sharp, right? But your quality has to be extremely good. If the quality of the portfolio video is not good, this strategy doesn't work. But another thing, guys, is I'm not saying that every single client will like this kind of approach. That's why the closing rate is not 100%. Some people will be kind of afraid of you being that sharp, that direct, and that full of yourself. You know, some clients will be kind of afraid of that because they'll be like, this just sounds too good to be true. So the pricing is reasonable. The person tells me exactly what I want to hear, right? And he's making good videos. Something is wrong. <laughs> some clients, believe it or not, they'll just think it's just too good to be true, okay? But here's the thing, guys. If you do this... And I'm not saying you have to be full of yourself and overconfident. I'm just saying that you have to be 
confident but know your place, okay? Just don't be like, oh, I'm the best editor in the world and no one comes even close to me. No, if you say things like that, then the person is just going to be turned off. You have to be good. You have to be good, you know? So you have to say something like, you know, I'm going to make you one of the best videos on the market or something like this, you know? So you're not saying that you're the best, the best, because this just, it's just bullcrap, right? There's always better video editors around. Let me put my headphones back in. Okay, guys, uh, and, and by doing that, by having such high confidence, and after, if you have a good portfolio to back that up, you're gonna get a lot of clients, guys, 100%. More than 50% of clients will like this approach as opposed to the first one where you're just like, uh, 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 where you're afraid, right? When the client feels that you're afraid, you lose the authority, you're not an expert, you know? They're an expert and they're hiring you. No, from the very first second when I pick up the phone, either calling the client or the client is calling me, I want to be in control, okay? And the first words I say. So, hi, Margaret, how are you? I tell her name, right? And I ask, how is she? I don't say that, oh, I'd love to work with your channel. I don't start a sales point. The first thing is we need to talk about them. We need to talk about the client, okay? Hi, Margaret, how are you? That's it. Then she starts talking. And then the second part is when you say what you're gonna deliver to her, okay? Thanks for having this call. I'm really glad that you liked my portfolio video. Now I'm gonna tell you how I work and how I make the best videos in the market at a very good price. And I'm the best person to make your videos. I'm gonna make your life very, very easy. And hopefully we're gonna have awesome working relationship together. Let's talk about it. Guys, can you see that? With this kind of approach, many, many clients. With this first approach where you're humble, it's hard, guys. 10%, 20%, maybe. Maybe you need to, you know, if, if, if you don't have that confidence, again, guys, you need to practice. You need to practice. The more clients you talk to on the phone, your, your, your key is getting on the phone, guys. And then when you get on the phone, you have to be confident, sharp. You need to know as well all the common questions. Think about it before the call. So for example, during the call, let's say you are promoting uh, short form video editing, okay? And let's say you say, my price is $30. And the client is like, uh, what are the rates of similar services in the market? If you don't know what to say, you lost the authority again. You need to know the answers of all the most common questions that they can come up with. What are your competitors, what are your competitors charging, right? What is the this kind of service cost in the market? right? How long is it going to take? What's the turnaround? And stuff like this. You have to know that like this, okay? I'm not saying that you have to reply very fast, but you have to know it straight away. So for example, if they ask, okay, what's the turnaround? I'm, I'm somewhat interested. If you say, um, I'm not sure, uh, we need to look into our schedule, uh, maybe, maybe a week, uh, no doesn't work. Yes, you can say, oh, I need to look into my calendar, but usually it is three days, okay? Usually it is three days, or usually it is 48 hours. Straight away, you need to know the answer, guys. And then, guys, of course, if they, if they have some objection, you need to handle that as well. Quite a lot, the objection is going to be you know, this is too expensive. So obviously, if you watched my previous video talking about how to make freelancing or drop servicing full-time income, so if you create a drop servicing business that becomes a full-time income, you're not going to be charging, you know, low amounts. You're going to be charging market rate leading amounts, hopefully even with a premium above what most people are charging because the quality is so good, delivery is so good, the communication is so good, but then you always come to this point where some of your clients, potential clients that you speak on the phone or during a video call, they're gonna object it and they're gonna be like, 
Okay, so you want me to pay thirty dollars for a short? What do you say, right? <laughs> and 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 they can say even look, but on on uh, on on this Facebook group, I've seen somebody is doing it for fifteen, or my cousin is doing it for ten. But this again comes back to the same point: the portfolio video has to be extremely good extremely good and hopefully you're in control throughout the entire call and hopefully you're an authority an expert in the field in their eyes okay so at that point you say this i'm aware that somebody is doing it for cheaper but i'm providing extremely high quality and i think that my price is reasonable given the quality and the turnaround also, I'm not going to let you down. A lot of these editors, they end up having 100 clients doing it for very low prices, but they don't deliver, and I do. Done. Most clients will just be like, uh, okay, so, uh, oh, so you're doing good quality, fast turnarounds, and, uh, and you actually deliver? Okay, fair enough. I, I got my answer why the price is, is high, or... It is market rate or leading, you know. So that's it, guys. These are kind of the main objections, you know. But you need to do your homework. So once you get to the call stage, you need to be sharp as an attack. And what does it mean to be enthusiastic as hell? That's, you know, that's what, what, what I was on, 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 on this illustration. So, I'm, you know, for example, again, you, you know, you have to be super, super, how to say it, but the, the, this is a slippery slope, guys, by the way. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't mean that you have to be overconfident. People hate overconfident people. This is a gen general thing around the world. If you're overconfident and if you're full of yourself, guys, it's bad. It's even worse than being very humble, okay? But because you're an expert and you actually do think that you're going to deliver them extremely high quality work at a reasonable price, you can be confident, right? Because you're helping them. So hopefully they give you their money and they're gonna get a good product, good service in, re in, in, in response, right? So you can be confident. You have my permission to be confident anyway. So here's the thing, guys. What does it mean to be uh, you know, enthusiastic? It basically means that you're Tone is sharp, okay? You're speaking relatively fast. Hi, Margaret, how are you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Versus, hi, Margaret. Yeah, um, yeah, I think we can do it. Yeah, I, I need to think about it. I, I think we can do it. I, I, I don't know which software we're gonna use. Yeah, I need to. I, I need to ask my. Uh, uh, we're gonna use Adobe Premiere. Yeah, we we don't use After Effects. We use DaVinci Resolve. Yeah, yeah, we can do it. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah, hundred percent. We can do it. Yeah, consider it done. Thanks. Okay. Can you see that? You have to be sharp, enthusiastic, and you need to know your homework. So if they ask you also, what kind of software are you gonna use? If you, if you guys, if you promoting video editing as a drop servicing and you don't know which kind of software you're gonna use, you haven't done your work, homework. You need to know all these things well in advance before the call even happens. And if you, if you don't have that in your head, like I do after talking to so many clients and working with so many clients, you can write a little note next to your computer or next to your phone and just write down software, turnaround, price for short, price for long form, price for thumbnail, and have that paper in front of you or just right next to your computer. If you're talking on the phone, also have that paper in your, in your hands when you're talking to them. So if they ask something, you have it, you have the answer straight away in front of you, okay? You don't have to think that much. Guys, 
Let's now move to the final stage of this course, the psychology of clients, how to make them say yes almost every time. Guys, I told you in this video that usually I close around 90% of clients that I end up talking to either on WhatsApp, on phone, or Google Meets, okay? How can you do the same? Practice. Yes. The more client calls you're going to have, the more practice in front of the mirror even, or with your family members, with your friends, you're going to get better and better and better and better. You also have to be an expert, okay? So in order to really know what you're saying every single time, you need to be somewhat of an expert. So you need to be a subject domain expert. You need to understand. If you're promoting YouTube thumbnails, not very difficult. I'm using Photoshop. I'm using Illustrator. This is the thumbnail. That's my portfolio. Done. If you're doing video editing, it's a bit more complicated. Uh, we're using Premiere Pro. We're using Adobe After Effects. We're using uh, DaVinci Resolve, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, you know, the files, the extensions, bam, bam, bam. Can you see there's a lot more variables? But if you know all of these answers, you can, you can be an expert, right? Even if you're a drop servicer, even if you're not actually delivering the work, you can find out and learn about these things. Okay, just Google it, you know? And for example, how to know which software your supplier is gonna be uh, delivering the videos in? Easy, ask your supplier, which software are you going to use uh, for this job, okay? What is the turnaround? All these answers, guys, you're gonna get from your supplier, okay? Prepare them in advance before the call. And then, guys, the psychology of clients. What is the psychology of clients? If you're a salesperson, if you work in sales, you'll know a lot of this stuff, but probably most of you are not working in sales and not professional salespeople. Neither am I, but I'm pretty good at sales, okay? So here's the thing, guys. What is the psychology of clients? Psychology of clients, whether you're selling something face-to-face -face or over the phone or Google uh, Meet, is risk tolerance, so thinking about risk, right, and cost. Mostly these two things they're worried about, okay? So cost, what is what is the cost? Like, how much does it cost? Does it cost $100 for a long-form video? Is that a lot? Is that, am I overpaying? Or is that very little? So sometimes clients don't actually know how much they should be paying, okay? And sometimes they know exactly how much they should be paying, but they're still kind of on the fence. So they don't know, am I getting a market rate? Is it above market rate? Is it below market rate? So there's a lot of concerns about the cost aspect, okay? Most of the clients will have some concerns about the cost aspect. And then there is risk aspect. Okay, what is the risk of working with such a client? Sorry, with such a supplier. So if I'm a drop servicer, if I'm a freelancer, I'm talking to the client, the client is thinking, am I overpaying and is this guy gonna screw me over? Like, is he, is he gonna leak my, uh, my raw fo footage? Is he, is he gonna, I don't know, whatever, guys. You know what I mean? Is, is he not gonna deliver on a Friday night? And when I need to upload a video, I haven't done anything and he's not gonna deliver. So two things, risk and cost. Most of the clients, that's what they're thinking about all the time from the very beginning of you nudging them via an email all the way through when you get to the call stage and perhaps even after that when you start working with them. So how can you actually understand their psychology and how can you make sure that you win them over and how can you make sure that they say yes almost every single time? You need to give them assurances of the concerns that they have. So how do you do that? First of all, as I said, in the email, you want to learn their name, right? Hopefully, you find their name from their YouTube channel, maybe from Upwork, 
maybe from their email. When you call them up, mention their name. When you reply, mention their name. This creates emotional bonds, okay? And you want to be very, you want to be seen as an expert, but you want to be seen as somebody who knows them for years. So when you get on a call, you want to be like a friend. So you don't want them to see you as if you're really far and you're all this super editor, whatever. No, you want to be relatable, okay? So that's why the first question of, hi, Margaret, how are you today? This question is super important because it opens their mouth and you're the first person saying that, right? So basically, you're in control of the call from the first few seconds, right? You're in control because the, the client has nothing else to do but just to start speaking, right? Unless, of course, they don't want to speak, they, they cannot speak or whatever, but if they can, and if that if that call is actually going ahead, the client is going to be, oh, I'm fa- fine, thanks, it's so nice of you, or whatever. That's it. You're winning them over from the first second. Guys, you're asking about them. The first few seconds, 10 seconds or so, it's about them, 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 them. People want value. People want to get stuff. People want them, people want other people asking about them, caring about them. It's about them. They're paying you, right? Not you paying them. They're paying you. You're going to make money from them. So make them feel like they're kings, okay? I'm not saying you have to be above them or below them. As I said, you're an expert, but you're just enough of an expert to be, you're not above them. That's the point I'm trying to make, guys. You're super friendly with them, but again, you are an expert, okay? And the first question is, how I usually approach these calls is, the first question is ask how they're doing, maybe ask about the story, how they ended up making their YouTube channel or whatever. And once they've spoken for a bit, then you start to rise and talk a bit louder, okay? And you want to then become more of an expert as you progress, if that makes sense. So initially, you're really friendly. You're talking almost like a friend. And then after they speak for a bit, then you're talking about what you can do for them, right? And then you're talking a bit louder. Then you're being really confident. But the very initial stage, you have to ask them questions. So they start speaking. So you become almost like friends, you know? Because if you don't do that, if you do the opposite, so let's say uh, you get on the call with a client and the first thing you say is not what I just said, but you say, I can offer you the best videos. Uh, The prices are going to be really good. The client is instantly, I never sales guy. Uh, I've been speaking to so many of these salespeople. It's just, uh, no. First few seconds, you ask questions about them, them, them. Make them valued. Make them feel like you care about them. And you do. Because if they're going to be paying you money and you're going to make profit, it's great, right? You're going to make money from them. So this is your client, you know? Guys, honestly, I've hired freelancers and I fired some freelancers because they were so rude. And I was just like crazy, I've hired a guy once from Sri Lanka and basically um, his communication was so horrible. I was paying him a pretty decent decent rate actually, but his communication was absolutely horrific. So one time he got like really angry at me. So I was just like, we need this video edited by Friday evening. And he was just like, sure, I can do it. I'll do it 100%. So he was fine. But then Friday evening comes and there's no video and the guys are flying. Okay, the guy reappears on Saturday. Thankfully, I had another editor to send the same footage so we could deliver it to the client. But the guy reappears on Saturday and he's like, oh, sorry, uh, I couldn't do it because of X, Y, Z. Here's the video, I did it. And I'm like, dude, I already delivered it. Like, you had to do it by Friday evening and uh, we agreed that you will do it. And you said, yes. And then he became like super angry. He was just like, 
oh, you're being so pushy. And, you know, dude, we agreed. We're not children, right? We agreed that by Friday evening, this is going to be done. That's it. There's no discussion. It has to be done. And, and, he, and he became like super angry. He was just like, you know, I, I can't remember even what he said, but he was just like, stupid, whatever. Guys, I worked with him for a few more days and I was just like, dude, it's not working out. Sorry. I, imagine I was like, I was his client. I was paying him money and I was paying him money that is actually a very good wage in Sri Lanka. Okay. And he was treating me like shit sometimes. Guys, this is crazy. Honestly, this this is absolutely crazy. What uh, some of these freelancers and probably even drop services, they just don't know how to communicate. If you have a good client who's paying you decent rates and you're making profit, he's the king. In this kind of context, the client is the king. You know, the client is always right. And, and guys, another thing, we're talking about psychology of clients. So I told you, risk and cost, right? Two things. But guys, think about it. How to mitigate the risk? Good portfolio, right? And then it's kind of re re basically you want to find out what they need and then you need to re repeat the same words back to them. So for example, if they say, I need to edit three videos per week, I'm going to send you the footage uh, via Dropbox, okay? And I need all these videos to be sent to me by Friday morning. Done. So after you establish the requirements during the call, then you have to you have to repeat the same thing back to them. So Margaret, of course we can do it. We're going to deliver you all the free videos every time we're going to be we're going to send it by Friday morning. Don't worry about it. You know, you you establish the requirements and you tell her exactly the same things back to her. Right or a client, whatever. If you do that, the client is going to be, oh, so I, what I need matches what they can offer. This is great. <laughs> Guys, honestly, this is simple stuff. But when you're talking to a client live, it's not obviously that simple because you don't have time to think. You have to respond fast, 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 right? But that's why you need to practice. After you do more of these calls, Guys, you, you, you're you going to practice, 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 and eventually you get to a point where you're proficient at this. So you'll you'll see the patterns. The clients are asking the same thing. You know, oh, why is the price so high? I've seen this guy's doing cheaper, blah, blah. And when you know all these answers, it's going to get easier and easier and easier. And once you've done like 20 or 30 calls, it's going to be like nuts. Oh, you're going you're gonna to easily open it. You, I mean, open nuts, right? He's going to crack nuts. It's easy. But initially, I appreciate it. It can be very hard. Okay. And guys, another final thing in the psychology of clients section is how do you actually, how do you actually make sure that the sale happens as quickly as possible? This is kind of going back to the Jordan Belfort example, right? So this guy is talking about the straight line persuasion system. How to make sure that the client goes from knowing nothing about you to paying you money in the quickest time with the least amount of hurdle and least amount of interference. So here's the thing, guys. Here's my strategy. If you're a freelancer, it's a bit more difficult because obviously you cannot promise so many things and not being able to deliver. So for example, if you get 20 clients and you physically cannot take 21st clients, it's hard, right? You just, you, there's not enough hours in the day. But when we're drop servicing, you can always get another supplier, right? So technically there's almost no limit, right? But of course you need to know that you're gonna be able to deliver the particular service. But my point is, if we are looking for clients for drop servicing, we need to know what the market rate is for that particular service, whether it's thumbnail design, video editing, shorts editing, YouTube SEO, YouTube script writing. We need to know what we can charge a reasonable rate and we need to know how much profit we're going to make. 
Why is that important, guys? Because then, during the call, we're going to know all the answers very quickly. So, for example, if they ask, you know, uh, can you do it instead of $90 for long-form video editing, can you do it at $85? You'll know straight away. Oh, actually, it's costing me $30. He's paying me $85. I'm $65 in profit. Yeah, I can do it. And then you say, yeah, probably we could do it at 85. Yeah, but I can't do I can't go any lower. But you see, guys, you need to know these numbers in your head. You need to know your cost. You need to know what kind of supplier rates you're gonna get, and you need to know what what you, you can charge your clients. Okay. And then, guys, also is how do you actually go from A to Z as quickly as possible? So as 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 I explained. We're in a, in a race. When we send that first email, how do we, the race starts, okay? How do we go as quickly as possible from client not knowing about us anything at all to getting their money in our PayPal or bank account? How do you do that? Always say yes and always say I can do it. But know the numbers. I just told you, know the numbers. So, for example, if the client says... If you say yes, 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 it's going to be so much faster, guys. There's no roadblocks. Saying no, it's a roadblock. So, for example, if the client says, um, can you deliver 10 videos uh, in a week? If you if you don't know the answer and you say, uh, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe not, uh, it's not good. Yeah, we can do it. Can you deliver a video on Friday mornings? I particularly need them to be sent to me on Friday mornings. Yeah, we can do it. Always say yes. If you're drop servicing, you're gonna find a supplier who's gonna be able to fulfill that order. Guys, 100%, okay? Because if you say no to something, already the risk increases, right? The risk increases in the head of the of the client is like, oh, okay, so maybe they cannot do something, but you have to open the gates gates wide open. So there is just no roadblocks. Like whatever they say, you say yes, 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 yes. Of course, I'm not saying you have to be like a monkey and just be like, say, they say, can you edit the short for a dollar? Yes. I'm not saying that. I'm saying all the reasonable questions that they ask, you say, yes, we can do it. Yes, we can do it. Uh, can, can you make 100 chores uh, in a week? Yes, we can do it. And then in your head, you're thinking, how are we going to do it? Uh, we're going to get more suppliers. Yeah, fine. We can do it. Yes, yes, yes. Then the execution part, of course, comes after the call. They give you the money. You can do it. As long as there is profit, you can do it. But again, guys, if you're a freelancer watching this, be careful because, of course, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to agree to making 100 shorts in the week if you're a freelancer because you're actually going to have to do the work. So, you know, you need to be cautious and aware. Can you actually do that? You know, can you actually deliver that much, um, that much of a result in such a, such a, such time scales, right? But if you're a drop servicer, all you need to care about is time. Like, how quickly does this need to be done? And then, do they give you the money? If they give you the money, and if the time permits, if you can find the suppliers, yes, the answer is yes. Okay, no roadblocks. And then, guys, you go. You have no roadblocks, so you go really, really fast until you get to the sort of payments question. And of course, guys, as I said, cost and payments is is kind of a, you know, so there's no risk, hopefully. they In their head, there's no risk of working with you or the risk is very minimal. But then again, like, what is the sort of the payments uh, question? How, how, how does the payments question, how does it work in their head? You need to make sure that you're portraying them that you have the best possible work and you're the best service provider, the best editor, the best supplier for their particular service, thumbnails, video editing, long form, short form, whatever, right? At the particular price point. Of course, somebody can do it cheaper, but at this quality, nobody can do it. At this quality, at this price point, you're the best person. So for example, if somebody says, oh, uh, I can only pay uh, $50 uh, for this video editing and, you're, and, you're, and you want $60. You can say, 
well, we can't do it in 50 because our price is 60. And at this quality, you're not going to get anything less than, than, than $60. And that's it. And you don't, don't say anything else because they want to, you know, they want to bring the price down. But if your quality is good, if you know the rates, if you've done the homework, you just, you just don't go below that because you can always go below that but sometimes they even might challenge you. They might say, if you say yes to 50, they might be like, actually, uh, can we do it at 45? And then again, uh, guys, no, you need to know your rates and your minimum before the call, right? You need to know your minimum price. You don't go below that. If it's below, if it's below that, if they want something below that, you just say, we have extremely high quality. We are delivering the work always on time. And uh, you know whatever, and and then and then that's it, guys. And this is the price. We cannot go below that. When you say that, they have no choice. They either want to work with you or they don't, and they need to find another supplier. Guys, this is really important, okay? But here's the thing, guys. Ideally, also, you want the payments to be handled in the least with the least amount of resistance and roadblocks as well. So I recommend you guys to get all the payment systems. You want to have PayPal and you have want to have bank accounts and perhaps even crypto as well. Here's the thing. You will have clients who will want to pay into a PayPal account, okay? So those clients, you're going to get covered by having a PayPal account. Second, if they want to pay by cards, PayPal also allows that. So, you know, another point how they can pay another another way. And then if you have a bank account, again, they can pay into bank accounts. And for example, I really uh, I really recommend this company called Vice.com. So Vice.com is absolutely brilliant. What they allow is they allow you to have a British pound uh, bank account, US dollar bank account, Australian dollar bank account. I've used this account business account actually for receiving client payments from australia from uk from us all the main countries and guys here's the thing it provides you a native bank account of uh, australia for example and in the us guys this is awesome it gives you the new york uh, sort code as well new york address and australia same so it's it's like a local bank account it adds additional trust as well adds additional trust and then guys crypto again also vice i don't know if it's available in every single country let's uh let's see where is the list of countries international debit cards okay guys you're gonna you're gonna do it yourself i i, I don't want to spend time doing that but i think it's available in very many countries i've actually paid people in india as well uh, people in the US as well. So you can transfer money. You can pay your suppliers as well. Guys, this account is really good because you can receive money and you can pay your suppliers. Excellent. And it, ha it gives you really good rates as well because PayPal has uh, quite a lot of fees, you know, around 3% of fees, right, to receive money. But this is you're receiving it nearly free in most cases. There's usually some conversion rate involved if you're getting money with different currencies, right? And then, guys, of course, uh, you want to have a crypto option as well. So just get a free wallet account. For example, Trust Wallet. Trust Wallet. You get a Trust Wallet, and you can receive BTC, Ethereum, Litecoin, USDT, and stuff like this. Okay? Because some clients, it's very, very rare, guys. Very, very rare. But some clients actually do want to pay for crypto. You want to have that option. Why not? Why not? Whatever they want. Client is king. If client wants to pay you in this, why not? So, guys, by the way, none of this information in this video was financial advice. I'm not endorsing any of these financial institutions, okay? I'm just telling you guys what is a strategy to use in terms of payments, you know, what kind of options are out there and what are the best and tried options. Wise is extremely reliable. It's a big company, trust me. It's a big company. It's, it's publicly listed on London Stock Exchange. It's very, very good. Um, 
There's another option of using a Revolut business account, but I actually recommend this more. Again, not financial advice. And crypto, again, do it at, at your own risk because if you lose your seed wallet or something, you can get, you know, you can lose all the money wherever. But it's it's for the people who are involved in, in crypto space. Okay. And PayPal, PayPal, what can we... Uh, what do we need to talk about PayPal? A lot of you guys actually asked uh, a few questions uh, regarding PayPal. So first of all, some of you ask, how do I actually create a PayPal account? So ideal case, you're opening up a business PayPal account because then you have higher limits, okay? And then you can, uh, when you verify it, you're going to have very little problems, okay? If you can't do that, use a personal one. But ideally, you create a business one. Just Google how to do it. Google how to verify it. In either way, you need to actually verify your PayPal account. Either way, you have to do it, whether it's a personal one or a business one. You have to do it, guys, 100%. That's because, and also you need to have your ID, physical photo ID, and proof of address in order to verify because otherwise you can get some funds stuck in any of these payment systems, you know, so you should have that, Okay. So guys, that was it for this video. So hopefully, if you watch this entire video, you now know exactly how to get your very first drop servicing client. So in this video, just to recap, I told you exactly how to get your first client, start collecting emails, buy a Fiverr list, or submit proposals on Upwork, or actually copy emails and URLs from here. So there's three ways how to get clients. And then guys, you need to get to the call stage as quickly as possible. WhatsApp call or Google Meets or Zoom call, okay? And in the call, that's where you do the sales. That's where you actually go from them knowing a little bit about you to actually getting uh, their email, where to send the invoice, getting their information, where to send the invoice, okay? And what is the invoice? A lot of you guys who are new to business, sometimes I ask, I get this question, what is an invoice? Like, how does it actually look? Guys, an invoice is nothing more than just a simple piece of paper that says invoice, that says the price, and that says uh your company name or your name so if it's uh if you don't have a company it would say your name it would say your address uh built to this would be your client's name or company their address uh this is optional by the way if you're a personal uh you know if you're a person you don't really need their address and then on invoice just have a number so for example 0001 then the next client you're gonna do you're gonna change it to two and then you have the date, and then you have the services provided. Just enter the name, enter the payment, uh, you know, amounts. And when it comes to terms, uh, just put in payment. Uh, uh, bef for example, fifty percent of payment. It, it depends on how you negotiate uh, these things. But I usually want you guys to get at least twenty to thirty percent deposit before the work. So you would say, uh, let's say thirty percent deposit uh, before the work comma, the rest, 70% after the work is completed. And then you send one invoice for the deposit and then you send second invoice for the remaining amount. So this would be if you download a template uh, from just Google and fill in the information by hand. But PayPal actually has a built-in uh, payment uh, invoice solution. So I'm just going to show an example. Obviously, I'm not going to create a PayPal invoice right now, but this is roughly how it looks, okay? On PayPal's website itself, you can easily do that, okay? So you can add company information, you can add the line item, you can add the price, you add their email, you click send, and they get it into their PayPal account. So that is, guys, how you do it. And when it comes to psychology, it's about two things, low risk, or almost no risk and reasonable cost for the quality. That's what customers are looking for. So guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully after you watch this video and you tried all these five uh, different services, 
you're gonna get at least one client and you're gonna start your drop servicing journey, guys. I hope to see you in more of my videos. I really, really, really appreciate all of you watching my videos because my channel is now actually growing quite fast. I, I'm seeing more and more views, guys. I'm seeing more and more comments. So I really appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. I hope this uh, tutorial was really helpful, guys. Drop a like. If you have some questions, drop a comment. Really support me in this journey because these videos take some time to do. And I really want to become the best channel when it comes to drop servicing on YouTube. And hopefully I'm, I'm getting there, guys. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. And I'm going to see you in the next video.